Welcome everybody to another Last Dance reaction video podcast um, on episodes three and four. Um, you see, they covered a lot. They really talked about a lot in these past um, two episodes. So we're going to get started. Um, one of the first things that was covered in episode three was um, Dennis Rodman and before I get into it, I just want to say that the they really did an excellent, excellent job with incorporating everything with the season that they filmed, which was the uh, um, 97, 98 um, season. And then going back in time and moving forward, I, I think they've done an excellent job. I think it's amazing. And I, and I really, really love the way they have done this. Um, so... As you know, Dennis Rodman was with the Detroit Pistons. The Detroit Pistons were the team that the Bulls were having trouble, um, you know, getting over the hump, as they like to call it in sports. Um, that was a team that um, they struggled to beat in order to get to the championship. So they kind of used Dennis Rodman as that entryway to talk about the, the Detroit Pistons. So I, I, I just really love the way they've done this so far from the first couple of episodes that I've watched. Um, so basically, you know, they give you a little backstory on Dennis Rodman, um, how he came about coming to the Bulls. They talk about how, you know, how he was with the Pistons and how he, basically, you know, he, he was a, a, a big nemesis um, with the Pistons. You know, they were a team that just was brutal towards the Bulls. I mean, they basically wanted to be fighting it seemed like it, it seemed like for them it, it, it was it was a fight um so that <laughs> that's it's kind of weird that they became teammates but obviously it worked out all they wanted to do was win championships so you know i guess when you're competitive when you're a competitor and and you know your ultimate goal is to win a championship so he was able to um help bring that uh but you know so they really talked about him and his you know how he started off and and man Dennis Rodman actually I feel of all of them you know kind of has a crazy story on how he made it to you know the NBA and 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 how he got as far as he did I don't know you know he said he was playing you know on the playground his mom kicked him out of his house um Playing on the playground, someone saw him and said, hey, do you want to come um, play college ball? He said, sure. You know, and then he said he averaged like 27 points, all these rebounds, you know, and and he just said he didn't stop. He just kept going and kept going. And, you know, his high energy is what, you know, got him to the NBA, I feel, you know. And then once in the NBA, he realized that he just had to do one or two things great and he'd have a shot. So. You know, he did that with the Pistons. They won two championships, you know, beating up on the Bulls, stopping the Bulls, you could say. You know, they might have been the only team that really gave the Bulls, you know, problems when they were with their, you know, core that won a championship. You know, once they had Scottie Pippen and everything, um, they did go to a game seven the year before they won a championship. And Scottie Pippen had a migraine, you know, happens, I guess. Um, and they got beat, you know. And then the next year, they finally beat them. And, you know, the Pistons decided to walk off and not shake hands. You know, most of this stuff has already been known, you know, but it's it's good to relive it and then to hear, you know, um, I guess, reactions from the players. One of the things that I really liked was, you know, they talked about um, Dennis when he was with the team um, and he needed a break. So he asked Phil Jackson if he can take a vacation, you know, and, you know, MJ being the guy that he is, he's like, you know, if anybody needs a fucking vacation, sorry, my words, you know, it's me. <laughs> I, I I need to um, go on vacation. And but they knew that they needed to let Dennis Rodman, you know, kind of have his space. Um, and then he was going to come back, you know, ready, you know, to give them, you know, what they needed. So. Man, all I got to say is if there was social media around back then, I think things would have been a lot different for some of the players. 
Um, cause imagine you're, you're out and you have this, you know, the bulls were huge back then, you know, just like the Beatles, you know, anything that you could think of, they were crazy. You know, people love them no matter where they went. So if you're out and you see, you know, your player, these players out, you're probably going to pull out your cell phone, you know, you're going to report it, whatever it's going to be all over. You know, I feel like players had more privacy back then. But anyways, so Rodman asks, can I go vacation? Phil Jackson tells him, yes, you know, you can have 48 hours. Go do what you want to do. So Rodman says, I'm going to go to Vegas. You know, ends up going to Vegas. Doesn't come back on time, of course. You know, we don't know how much time really passes. They didn't really say. Um, which is, this This was something new to me. You know, I, I love this story. I did not know this story. Obviously, you know, like I said, there's not social media. There, you know, people aren't really writing about this stuff. They did find out later on in that year that, you know, he had gone in between games of the finals that he went back to to gamble and stuff and i don't i guess to vegas i'm not sure who knows what he did maybe he didn't go gamble maybe he went do did some other stuff but you know it was you know that was known and and you know it was it was blowing up proud of proportion i mean obviously look at the results were there i think phil jackson knew that he kind of knew how to you know handle his players so he knew you know just i think he was a a player's coach you could say um so Anyways, um, fast forward, we're going back to this story. So Michael Jordan had to actually show up at his um, hotel and, you know, knock on the door. And he got Dennis out um, of his hotel and took him back to practice. And, you know, there's a clip of them walking into practice. And, you know, Phil Jackson says something to Dennis. And Michael's just like, hey, you should be thankful that he's even here, that his body made it here. You know, um, that was not known. So that's some, something new that we got to find out, you know, which is cool. Because you know, like I said, a lot of these, a lot of the stuff, you know, they're just kind of giving you the backstory. I feel like this documentary is really geared for the people that didn't know the Bulls, didn't know Michael Jordan. And now they're getting to see that. Um, rather, it's because LeBron James or people are forgetting. We'll never know. But I mean, it, it, for whatever reason, it's out and it's 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 great. And you're getting... From one season, you're getting everything, everything, all the other seasons. Instead of just watching season by season, you know, I feel like that would be a little boring. So, like I said, again, I love the what they did, how they approached this, you know, talking, using one season and going back. Um, and so, you know, moving on from Dennis, you know, they brought, they really quickly moved into Phil Jackson. You know, like I said, they tie everything in together. And it's just beautifully done, I would say. So, obviously, talking about Dennis Rodman, you had to talk about Phil Jackson. You know, they talked about how they kind of bonded over um, different things. And Phil Jackson just really knew, you know, how to get the best out of Dennis Rodman. So, before Phil Jackson, Doug Collins was the coach. Um, and, you know, he got them pretty close to, to the finals, but they ran into the Pistons. So... I think they needed. They knew they wanted to go to a different direction, and this is when we find out Jerry Krause was the one who actually wanted uh, Phil Jackson to um, maybe one day take over. Um, he had him uh, interview uh, for Stan, the coach that the Bulls had, but I think he came in. They said not dressed properly or something like that, and he just he just wasn't having any of it so that didn't work out but then two years later you know he said he kind of prepped phil jackson in a way um and he interviewed with doug collins doug collins said okay sure we'll bring him on so he was an assistant coach he was with the bulls during this whole time um and that's kind of funny to me that jerry Krause would need approval from somebody else when it seemed like he was just making decisions left and right he didn't care he didn't care that he wasn't even the owner you know he was just the gm so it was kind of to me i'm like why didn't if he wanted him there why didn't he just say you're hi he's hired and, and whatever but you know you you kind of saw the emergence of their bond well i wouldn't i guess i wouldn't say bond but over their little relationship that they had. Jerry Krause was a huge Phil Jackson fan, brought him from, I believe, the CBA, where he was, you know, coaching in New York, 
prior Phil Jackson had gone, you know, and po- um, coached in, you know, other other places first. Um, and then they give also a backstory on Phil Jackson, on his upbringing, growing up, on his playing career. So just just beautifully done. You know, that's awesome stuff to kind of um, know as well. Um, and and finally, they show, you know, how Phil Jackson, um, you know, how he liked to coach his players. They got they they end up firing Doug Collins and and then move in Phil Jackson as a coach, as a head coach, um, because they knew that you know he was ready you know it was time for him to 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 be a head coach. Um, he installed the triangle offense, a complicated system that basically just moved the ball around and didn't set um you know the ball didn't wasn't still in somebody's hands where the other teams could you know, load up their defense. So it was, a, it was a, it's a complicated offense, hard to learn where players were just constantly moving. I remember he said in one thing where one pass, there's 33 other options going on around you. So imagine trying to, you know, imagine trying to stop that when you just got players going different ways, different directions, it's probably tough. And that's what makes it hard to learn. But anyways, so, you know, he puts that in, Bulls start, you know, um, rolling, they're 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 playing well. They again face the Pistons and get beaten by the Pistons. Scottie Pippen has a migraine in Game Seven, <sighs> so it's back to the drawing board um, for the Bulls. And you know, Jordan then decides that he's not going to get beat up anymore. He's tired of it. You know, he's going to start lifting weights. So, you know, he he starts his program. You know, they they call it. I think they call it, what do they call it? I think the breakfast club. I'm not sure. I don't even know. But it was basically something with his trainer. He had a trainer. He got a trainer. You know, they worked. He just worked every day. Um, he started involving his teammates too. So, like, everybody was just getting ready and, and gearing up to get better. Um, that was the, the, the main goal because they knew that they were going to have to get tougher, not just physically. You know, yeah, the lifting, the weights, you know, that that's going to come for your body. But mentally you know to that hurdle that the pistons were you know they were gonna beat you up they were gonna hurt you um they were just gonna you know keep you down no matter what um so they had to get mentally tough i feel i don't know how they did it other than just you know being a unit staying together um knowing that the hard work that they've done you know they finally have a coach that they can trust that has you know got them ready gotten to this point um and they finally um sweep them they sweep the Detroit Pistons four games to nothing and you know the what happened during that time that game that last game you know the Pistons just kind of walked off without shaking hands although the Bulls had done that you know the two previous years getting beat you know they shook their hands and and um the, the Pistons just, they want nothing to do with that. I understand you got your butt kicked, basically. So, you know, it's not it's not fun. But, I mean, you still have to have some level of respect. And Isaiah Thomas was interviewed, and he did say that that's how, you know, they were past the torch, I guess, by the Boston Celtics. I don't know. They showed a little clip or something like that, but but who knows. So, anyways... Going forward, you know, they finally get past that that hurdle of the Pistons, and they made it. To, they make it to the championship, and we all know what happens. You know, they play the Lakers, they lose Game One, uh, but then they come back and win four straight, where they win the championship in LA. You know, um, everything's good, everything's great. You get that first championship down, you know, and everything should be amazing, awesome, right? No, so then. They jump back to 97, 98, and that's when they start to show the the problems between, you know, Phil Jackson, Jerry Krause, the other players. I know they showed a little bit in um, episode two with Scotty, but, you know, they kind of showed a little more, whereas I feel he thought Jerry Krause believed that, hey, I brought you here. 
Phil Jackson, I discovered you. You know, you're the reason that you're coaching. You, you know, I mean, I'm the reason that you're coaching. I'm the reason that you're winning. And I put this team together and gave it to you. You know, Phil Jackson kind of did come to a team that was already set. He brought the stuff needed. You know, that's one of the things that um, I, you know, when I would debate about LeBron and Jordan over, you know, who's better, it's always that, you know, people try to say, oh, the Bulls won X amount of games without him. You know, they did that. Yeah, they did that. In the in the first season he was gone, they won like 55 games. Um, and then the next season they struggled. He came back, you know, got them in. They got into the playoffs. We know what happens. But B.J. Armstrong said it best. They were a good team, but they did not have that one closer, that one that when you need a shot or when the the, the clock is running down, and you're like, who's going to score? You know what I'm saying? When I know what that's like to play on a team, whether it's soccer or basketball or whatever, where you just have a whole bunch of people who can pass the ball, pass the ball, pass the ball, but there isn't somebody that says, give me the ball. You know what I'm saying? Like, I've been on that end you know, to, to like, who's going to do it? Who's going to do it? You know, and you're just sitting waiting and nothing happens. That's the difference between a team that, you know, has Jordan and doesn't have Jordan. So I feel like it's a little bit, uh, you can't always just see the numbers basically. Cause yeah, they might've won 55 games, but it just wasn't the same, um, Bulls team. That's for sure. Um, so yeah, so they show us, you know, what happens where Krause starts saying that, you know, Phil Jackson isn't coming back. And and the riff between them, you know, they gave us a little bit of insight more into that. Um, and um, that's basically how they kind of ended, um, showing us in the 98, the last game was, you know, they showed us them playing the Jazz in the regular season and then them losing, obviously, I think they wanted to show us that they maybe weren't able to um, focus as much on um, on the game and and maybe because of the whole media problem and, and, and Jerry Krause coming out and saying that stuff. Um, but yeah, I'm excited for episode um, five and six. Um, so far, I think this has been a great documentary for people who don't know the Bulls, who don't know Jordan. Um, I don't know. I just feel like if you, if you didn't know that side of the Bulls or Jordan, like you're watching this, you should be, be a fan now. You know, a lot of these younger NBA players, I see them, you know, tweeting stuff. They're showing their tweets and stuff. And, and it's like, how did you not know this? You know, if you, if you should be, somebody above you should have been telling you who Jordan was. I'm, you know, he's just one person that you should all, everybody should know. Same with magic, same with bird, you know, Will Chamberlain, Kareem, you, you should come into the game. If you're a real basketball player, if you're going to, especially if you're a professional, I feel like you should be watching as much and trying to learn from as much of these players as you can. But for some reason, I, I think that doesn't happen. So I feel a lot of people get lost and they want to, you know, say that LeBron is the greatest and, it's not to debate that this is not what the documentary is about, but it's just kind of like, how can you not think about Jordan as being the greatest after watching this? It's, it's crazy to me. Um, but I'm going to end this little recap right there. Um, uh, yeah, stay tuned for next week, man. I, I this is only going to get, uh, deeper and crazier. I feel and, and much better as the episodes go on. So we'll see you guys here next week. At the same time, same YouTube channel. Have a good night. Peace.